Hello everybody! I've been a little under the weather, you may have noticed I haven't uploaded, but Shane Dawson sat down with Katie Morton on Katie's channel and I wanted to talk about it because they talked about narcissists and it's something that I have talked about a lot here on my channel. Now because I am in a little bit of a time crunch today, I just want to go over the points that they talked about where I was like, Yes! Thank you so much for saying these things because I have been trying to dispel some myths about narcissism and narcissistic personality disorder for a while now on my channel. Anybody who knows, knows that this is a thing with me. I get very upset and very passionate about this when people talk about narcissism and they say things that just aren't true. So to hear them repeated by both Katie and Shane, props to Shane for knowing some of this stuff, I was happy to hear it. So I'm just gonna like go through my bullet points of things that I noticed where I was like, yes, thank you so much. So the first thing that really kind of surprised me was that Shane was the one who said that narcissists have empathy. And I was like, what? Shane? How the hell did you know that? Because most people think that a narcissist doesn't have empathy, but they do. They definitely have cognitive empathy, which is the ability to think what somebody else is thinking. And cognitive empathy is that ability to know that the things that we do, like how they're going to affect somebody else, they may not necessarily feel feel it. They may not necessarily care about the way that they're affecting somebody else, but they can know, like, if I treat you nicely, you're probably going to feel good. Or if I say something nasty, you're probably going to feel bad. But also they have affective empathy too, which is that emotional empathy that we think of when we talk about empathy. And I think people just don't understand this. Like, the core problem of narcissism isn't a lack of empathy. And I think a big problem has been that the psychological community has put this out there for so long that people think that that's the deal, but that's not the deal. The biggest issue with narcissism is really a self-esteem problem. And so even though somebody who has a narcissistic issue or narcissistic personality disorder, they may hurt you and they may know it's gonna hurt you, they may not, they may even feel it, they may feel that they're hurting you, but they may not have the ability to change the behavior or to invest as much care in you as they care about themselves because they feel such low self-esteem and because they're hurting all the time. All right, so moving on, another thing that was brought up, which Katie brought up, which is that a narcissist can change. And I know, and even she said that a lot of people think that personality disorders in general can't be changed, but they absolutely can. And the trick is, and this is what Katie mentioned, that the person has to want to change. And for some personality disorders, just like Katie said, particularly narcissistic personality disorder, it's difficult to want to change, number one, because with narcissistic personality disorder, there is this deep sense of low self-esteem and this feeling that they're not able to change. But also there's other complications, like the fact that everybody thinks that narcissism can't be changed. I mean, why would you go to try to change something if everybody says it can't be changed? And also the fact that people don't really understand it and like if you tell if I tell you I'm a narcissist like what are you going to do for me how are you going to help me you're probably just going to distance yourself from me and avoid me right so how am I going to get help for this and the other thing is if people don't know about the narcissism they could be enablers helping the narcissist to continue doing the things that bolster their self-esteem, the poor coping mechanisms that they use that get them through the day that help them to survive. Something else that was brought up is that narcissists are hurting and they just don't know how to express it that well and that they can be sad, absolutely, and maybe you don't see it because they do it in private or they do it internally or they don't know how to express it, but they are hurting inside. Now you may not recognize it as hurting. It may not be the hurting that we all think of. It's not always going to be like tears and hiding away. Some narcissists are going to be out in public and they're going to be more social when they're hurting. In fact, when they're hurting, they may actually present more of a happy image to try to prove to you that they're not hurting or at least prove it to themselves. The thing with people who are narcissistic is that when they're hurting, they have such low self-esteem. They feel so badly about themselves and they probably beat themselves up more than they would ever acknowledge to you that when they're hurting, it feels too vulnerable. It kind of feels like they're going to die if they express that hurt because they already feel vulnerable and weak all the time. And if they let you know, they feel like you're just going to destroy them. So that's why they put up this false image of the happy person, of the confident person. And this leads me into a realization that Shane had, which is that sometimes the narcissist 
is the person who's always positive. And I'm really glad he brought this up because it's something that I've noticed and I don't know that I've mentioned it enough here, but sometimes the narcissist is the ultra spiritual person who seems like they always have their stuff together and they're always encouraging you to do good things and they're always being nice to people. And it's like, what? wait a minute, that's not a narcissist, but actually, yes, it definitely can be because it's all a fake Thing that they're putting on to try to mask how they feel inside. Now that doesn't mean that they're aware that that's how they feel inside. They probably aren't. I mean, there's different severities to everything when it comes to personality. So some people are not going to be so aware. Some people might be highly aware. Some people are not going to be so motivated to change. Some people are going to be highly motivated to change. When it comes to narcissism, I think that most people probably aren't very aware and they're not very motivated to change. And there can be all kinds of different reasons for this. Like I mentioned, sometimes people enable it. I think our culture in general here in America anyway kind of rewards narcissism, so it's not so obvious as a problem to people. Both the person who's experiencing narcissism and the people around them can both be in denial about what's happening. But like Shane said, his friend that he mentioned who he suspects has narcissistic issues because they told him, which is another thing that we have to be careful about. We can't just decide that somebody's a narcissist because I know that people throw this word around a lot and we just label anybody that hurts us or anybody that does something we disagree with as a narcissist, but it's important that we actually have them go to somebody to confirm this. But anyway, Shane's friend said that they have this realization. And like Katie said, that's a really good thing because it's hard for people to even get to the awareness part to understand that there's some kind of a problem. And then Shane was saying, well, what do I do from here? And Katie said, like, probably try to recommend them to go and see a therapist, but it has to be a therapist who understands these things. There are way too many therapists out there, and I'm calling you out if you're one of them watching here, who don't like to treat narcissists or who decide that narcissists aren't worth treating or they're not worth your time. And I'm sorry, but if you are in this profession and you can't have the temperament and you can't take on at least a couple of caseloads of people who have narcissistic issues, maybe this isn't the right profession for you because these people with narcissistic issues exist in the world and it's a problem and that's what you're there to treat. And having the stigma that it's untreatable or it's not worth the problem of dealing with the narcissistic client. I'm sorry, but that's bullshit. It's just bullshit. And if you've been trained, then you know how to handle this. You know, something that Katie said, which again, I'm so happy that they had this conversation because it's like a lot of the myths that I try to dispel around narcissism too. Katie had said, that they're not necessarily dangerous. It's just the way that they cope with life. Like once you see through who a narcissist is, like they're pretty benign. There's not really that much that they're gonna do to you if they go into something more like antisocial personality disorder, that's another story. Then they're doing things that are actually physically harmful, that are breaking the law, that can get you in trouble. And I understand that sometimes narcissistic people do these things, but in general, if you set your boundaries and you limit them with consequences, when you see through somebody who's narcissistic, they're not going to affect your life. And I know that there's going to be people who hear this and they're going to be very upset with me because they've been in love with somebody who was a narcissist or narcissistic and they've gone through the pain of that. And listen, I've been there. I have been in very intimate situations with people who were narcissistic, who have hurt me in major, major ways. And frankly, I learned my lesson and I decided it was time that I needed to learn boundaries as Shane and Katie discussed. And once I figured that out, once I understood how to set a boundary, how to put down consequences, how to remove myself from somebody else's life when they were treating me poorly, it doesn't happen anymore. Narcissists don't bother me. One of the things that they talked about was having these boundaries and what do you do? What do you do when somebody's hurting you? When somebody's overwhelming you? You know, Shane said that he's a bit of an empath. I don't really love that word, but I think everybody's an empath. Everybody has some degree of empathy, but maybe a caretaker, like I can see that. He likes to help people, he likes to get involved, and he wants to feel like he can lift people up. And I cool, whatever, I get that. But what do you do when the, somebody's draining you when you're trying to lift them up? Well, eventually you have to decide, like, is this hurting me? And if it's hurting you, then you have to let them know, you know, yes, if they're hurting you in physical and ways that are unsafe, then it's okay to just cut them out completely. It's not the greatest thing but you have to look out for your safety. But if it's not that urgent, if they're just kind of emotionally hurting you and they're kind of on the fringes, then 
let them know. Let them know, like, you know what? I just don't, and, and own it. I was very appreciative that they mentioned, basically, or Katie had mentioned owning it. Own the emotion. Say, you know what? I don't feel comfortable the way that we talk to each other. Or, you know, this is just too overwhelming for me. That I, I can't have this kind of a relationship in my life right now. I don't have time to deal with all the stuff that you say. And... You know, it's not that I think you're a bad person. You don't have to go there when you have a conversation with somebody, but just say, like, keep it all on you. It doesn't have to be about them. And then they can't make up excuses for this, that, and the other thing. As long as you're saying, like, I'm sorry, this is how I feel, they can't tell you not to feel the way that you feel. Since I am in a rush, I've got to end it here, but I want to know what are your opinions on this conversation about narcissism? What do you think of Shane and Katie? Leave that down below in the comments, and I'll look forward to reading it.